What is up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with the latest episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom. And I know a lot of people in our audience are very interested and curious and keeping an eye out or they are already actively on Instagram every single day looking to meet ideal clients uh, and build their audience and build their followership. And that is exactly what we're talking about today. We got Chelsea Pites on the show. We're bringing her in in a second. First, the junior grandmaster who is also on Instagram every day to the, uh, to the detriment of all mankind, Greg McDaniel in the co-pilot seat. What's up today? It's not the detriment. It's to the gain of the mass population of the U.S. and the surrounding countries. Um, and I, I epically, I, I, I'm so inconsistent at Instagram and their stories, and I always kick myself and going, damn, I got to get better at this, but I never freaking do. And so hopefully Chelsea will be able to rein me in and uh, give me some tactical opportunities here to be better at this so I can be more like her because she's my, gonna, she's my mentor in life and she's my you know spirit animal. And I've been trying to look up to her for years. Uh, so hopefully this can happen. But I'm doing a couple of things wearing. You guys can't see me wearing a bright blue shirt because it's a Warriors game tonight. Uh, we got to come back from our slump. So I'm, gonna, I'm wearing blue. I was going to wear my Warriors shirt, but it's in the dirty laundry. Damn it. And it was too stinky to even put on. But I, uh, I almost burned my house down today. Yeah. <laughs> now this and this is directly like due to so you're you're like wandering around uh, hanging out on Instagram while you're cooking dinner. Is that what's going on? No, no, no. I was with viral. Instagram fire. I was doing with uh was shooting some viral videos this morning with my coach Paul and I'm like What is that what's that electrical burn smell? I got up and looked in the kitchen. Yeah, my dumbass made coffee and forgot to turn the uh, coffee pot off, and so I decided to cook my coffee pot onto my stove. So Ooh. that was awesome. Wow. Yeah, I uh, I need to go buy a new coffee pot. So. Yeah, yeah, I've been there, done that. I used to boil water on the stove for coffee and then pour it into a French press, and I can't tell you how many saucepans I wiped out doing yeah, that. I that's just, what I did. I yeah. hopped on a call. Yeah, burned that pan down. <laughs> zero water left. You know, pans Stupid. melted the stove. All right. <laughs> So, first of all, uh, before we bring Chelsea in, let's bring Gene Volpe in because he is the regular, the evil bald ninja himself. Gene, what's up today? What up, Matt Johnson? How you living? I am living large. I mean, how dare you ask that question? I mean, it's the, the, the answer is built into the question. All right, oh, and then God. Chelsea, officially, by the way, welcome to the show. We're so excited to have you here. Thank you. I, I can tell them amongst my people. This is going to be fun. Thanks for having me on. I like the coffee pot story. I'm like, I, you've already given me like 10 ideas for your Instagram stories and your <laughs> You know, burning down the house. This is great. I love oh, it. <laughs> I didn't even think about it. that's why you're my spirit animal. Right? That's all, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You missed it. You missed it, Greg. All right. So, Chelsea, give us uh, – we're, we're going to talk a little bit. We're going to dive right in, and then we'll take a step back and talk a little bit about your background for anyone that might not know you. This is our first experience with you on the show, but I bet there's a ton of people in our audience who do already know who you are. So we're going to skip that for a second, um, and we're going to answer one of the questions that you're getting a lot right now, which is the Instagram algorithm and what's going on. So let's uh, let's tackle that first. What's your perspective? Yeah, there's a lot to learn about the algorithms, whether you're a Facebook fan, whether you're an Instagram fan. And, and the, the frustrating part about it all is not only is it always changing, but they're different <laughs> on different mm -hmm. platforms. So what you're going to be doing on Facebook is might be a little bit different than what you would do on Instagram. Um, since you asked about Instagram first, let me talk about the algorithms over there. What you should know about Instagram, this actually does transfer over to Facebook, is now that we have the main feed the old school now that don't you love it that the feed is old school now and the new <laughs> school is stories right you've got a feed of stories at the top you've got your main feed that is you know the og ig that <laughs> is is going to be two totally different algorithms so if i love watching Matt stories all day long it doesn't mean just because i'm watching and engaging with those stories that i'm going to see those posts in the main feed higher there so it's almost like you have two algorithms working which means you have to engage in both of them if you kind of want to be seen and see other people. You have to train the algorithms. Now, you'll hear people that say hacking the algorithms, yada, yada, yada. I'm not a hacker. I know all those things. But what I believe is that you truly can leverage and work with the algorithm if you know how to use it. One of the ways to do that is right now the platforms are looking at two-way mutual engagement. They're looking at, are you watching my stuff? And is this person watching yours? Are we talking back and forth? So direct messaging, huge. So if I have a new follower that connects with me and I send them a voice message, which is a best practice. I do it all the time. If you looked at their account and they're in your ideal audience and you're like, yep, I'm going to follow this person back, I immediately send them a voice message because one, I want them to say, that's different. 
Okay, nobody else sends me a voice message. Maybe they didn't even know you could send a voice message. So you just yeah. talk to something. And two, I immediately trained the algorithm to be like, oh, they're talking. So we want Chelsea stuff to go right at the top of their feed. So it's all about engaging with people. And that means you cannot stalk without talk, right? So if you're going to go stalk those Instagram stories, you better be talking because that's the only way to train the algorithm so that they start seeing your stuff too. We don't have custom friends lists like we do in Facebook. I have to engage with other people's content if I want my content seen in their feed. So um, that's a tip for the algorithm. What you see in Instagram is what you get, meaning they're not hiding stuff. Facebook, they're picking and choosing what you see. There's so much stuff going on over in Facebook. They're picking and choosing what you see in the feed. Instagram, if I scrolled forever, I would possibly see everything, but it's also 100% based on what you like. If you like dogs, you're going to see more dog stuff. If all of us were following the same exact accounts, we would still see stuff in different order and different things based on what we like to do in Insta. Chelsea, hmm. let me ask you a quick question here. So as soon as you were talking about the voice messages, I picked up my phone, I went down, I went to my stories, right? And a gal, Ashley, who is in San Diego, in your neck of the woods, Matt, I, she was the first story there. So I clicked on it, and I went there to send a message. How do I send a voice message to her? I didn't see an option to send a voice message. Yeah, so if you – now, this is what I'm talking about when you're um, actually following somebody or if you've added to the page. So if you are connected with those people, and even if you're not connected with them, if I'm looking at my app right now, there's a little paper airplane that is on the main uh, menu. In the very, in the, If you're on your home screen, the very top. Right. top Top right, little paper airplane guy. Oh, That's yeah, yeah. Send messages to people. And when you initiate the message, like I'm just going to tap into someone's right now, there is a little uh, microphone at the very bottom of where you're going to be putting in your message. So it says message, and there's like a little camera. I can send a picture. I can send a video. I can send a voice message now. People say, why don't you send a video? Well, I don't know. I mean, like, I just feel, I don't want to be, sometimes I feel like, well, maybe I need to get to know them a little bit if I send a video. <laughs> but a voice message, I feel like, hey, it's me. It's my voice message. And I may, it's just easier for me to, you know, say something instead of typing that out. So yeah. you'll see the little microphone guy in the message and you yeah. can send the message via that right okay, there. Okay, so it has to be a direct message. It can't be a response to a story or a response to a post. It has to be a direct DM. Right, but I think that they are going to add voice messaging when you are actually uh, sending the DM via the story because that's, well, let's be honest, they stole everything from Snapchat and Snapchat had that, so that's coming next, I'm sure. So, yes, I'm excited for when they do have the voice messaging uh, in the direct message via story. So let me get this clear so that you are you are a huge proponent of me spending voice messages. I just want to get, get that out there, just say yes or no, yes or no. Yes, I am. Matt, Matt, you heard it. Don't you ever fucking give me shit about me sending you voice messages on Instagram ever again. You will listen <laughs> to my messages. I like when you send me messages like that. I know. Thank you, Gene. I do. It's easier person. for me. I it's... wish, though, that you could speed it up because some people talk a little too slow for me, and <laughs> oh I'm like yeah. a two-time person. So I'm like, I wish they could, like, speed it up so I could just, like, listen to them really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> so let me, I want to jump in here. I want to jump in here. I want to ask Chelsea this question because you, you, you said something there that I, I, want to, I want to talk about the other end of it. So, like, let's talk about introducing voice. I, I want to know what your thoughts are because the predictive analytics in, on these social media platforms allow the platforms themselves to sort through your text and some of the other stuff that you're posting so that they can – effectively predict who you want to deal with and what types of products you're interested in, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm curious because I know Facebook in 2016 launched an uh, artificial intelligence that allows them to read memes mm -hmm. and allows them to actually read into pictures. So I don't know if you know this, but recently they just started to really focus some marketing dollars on reading into photos that you upload. So what happens is what? like, let's say, yeah, so watch. So I take a picture of me with my munchos. And they're able to decipher, like Google Lens, that there's those chips in here. And now they can advertise out to hers and be like, yeah, this dude eats chips. We, we can tell by his picture. So I'm curious as to how you think. So if they allow you to do more voice, do they have an AI in place? And I know this is, this is probably just opinion and conjecture. Do you think they have an AI in place that will allow them to sort through that, which is another privacy thing altogether? Or do you think that they won't, they don't do it, and so therefore they won't allow it to happen because they can't effectively read your mind through voice? Does that make sense? Yes, 
so much for me to talk about. I am loving the world of voice. Um, I have a, I started a flash briefing when nobody knew what they were. And so I'm like geeking out about like anything having to do with voice and like how marketing is going to change with that because we're not going to be doing Google searches anymore. We're going to be voicing it, right? So that all that has to change. But if you're asking my personal opinion, which is again, opinion, conjecture, I may be a little bit of a conspiracy theorist as well. Ooh. They are totally listening to everything we say, and I've proven it because I have talked through apps and then yep. got the ad less than two minutes later. So I see it's a thousand percent it's there. So, um, and, and with voice trending the way it's going and with the searches, 50% of searches going without a keyboard as of next year, they have to, they have to, or they're gonna be missing out a huge piece of the market. Wait a minute, back the, back the train up a second. You just said 50% of searches by 2020 are going to be voice, not typed. Without a keyboard. So whether I'm talking Holy or I'm talking to, you know, whatever system I have, Google Home, Alexa, I'm yeah. hoping she's not in the room because I don't want to turn her on. I, I always turn her off because that chatty on. bitch always <laughs> perks up. You have to call Alexi so she doesn't go off. Alexi. <laughs> I feel so bad for like every kid since like 2000 that was named. Alexa. So the name of Lexi because it's all, like they're getting it all the time. And you know, they just had <laughs> that, um, and I'm not versed in what happened. I think it was a murder case where oh, yeah. they seized yep. all of the devices because y'all know it was recording. Come on now, come on. Yeah. <laughs> but yep. privacy is a major issue. In 2020, that is a major issue for the socials. That's why people are going to private direct messaging, which is why going stories is so important. It's one-to-one -one private direct messaging. So that is gonna it be- is still, Yeah, but I, I, I would tend to side with both you and Gene in the sense that I think just con conspiracy theory, I, I don't think it's going to matter. They can call it private as long as it's on their platform. I think they're paying attention and then we'll use it to try to serve up ads. Uh, I think that's just common sense. Like they're gonna have to do, they're always going to be searching for more money. You don't pay a billion dollars for a social network and then let it sit around and just be awesome. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and just yeah, be, be free and awesome. So, um, all right, so let's uh, let's take a quick step back because I wanna relate this to uh, to Chelsea, your, your everyday world. Obviously this is the stuff that you geek out about, but you're also selling real estate. So tell us just a, a, give us a quick peek into what the real estate business looks like and then we'll tie those two together. Yeah, so I'm not currently selling real estate anymore. I did for a really, really long time. I got my license in 2001. I say 2001 BF, that's before Facebook because I just want people to know that I actually did this stuff, right? Before we had social media. I, we did mm -hmm. the door knocking and the open houses. By the way, all of that still, everything works. Mm -hmm. It just yeah. depends on what you're doing consistently and how you are you know, sticking with it and branding and all that. I do think that personal branding is much more important today because of social media than it was when I was in real estate because back then it was about more of like a, a brokerage brand. Um, so I sold real estate for many years. I sold new homes. I did resale. I'm in Arizona. So when we got hit in 2007, 8, and 9, whew, the big short was very true if you saw that movie. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, probably not a great idea. My husband and I were doing the same thing at the same time. So two people, two incomes in a really terrible crash. Not so great. We lost all of our homes, personal and investment. Not because we, you know, couldn't, like, afford them because, like, nobody would help us. Like, the banks were, like, non-responsive. Mm -hmm. And I spent a couple of years doing short sales. I was one of the first two people doing short sales that was in my brokerage. And it was brutal for me. It was really emotional. I sat across people that were losing their homes and they said, what do we do? Can you help us? And it really wore me down. And so I left and, you know, stayed in the industry. I went into the title and escrow side of it in, in the marketing capacity. Um, and that's, you know, where I'm still at now. And I basically, you know, I'm a social sales coach. I speak. Um, I write a lot for our industry articles and different things of that nature. But um, yeah, I, I did real estate in, in the old days, I guess. We were talking about our triplicate forms and faxing. Yeah, I, I, was, <laughs> I was that person, right? I actually yeah, yeah. drove people in my car. Nobody ever met me anywhere. I ask people now, I go, do you drive people in their car? They're like, no. <laughs> I actually met people in my car. It's, I don't know if that's weird now, but I loved it. I loved the process. I, lo I loved being a, like a buyer's agent, which that was mm. my thing. I loved it. I loved taking people around and finding the ultimate home. And it was, yeah, it was great. So I, I told you, I told you you're my spirit animal. That's just, I feel this, I feel the same way. I love being working with buyers. I, it's, like, it. it's like a hunt. It's like an Easter yeah. egg hunt. You don't know what you're going to find in every house. 
Um, I just really enjoyed it. Although, I will tell this one story. I did like taking people in my car, except for this one kid. This little shitbag, you know, he decided to eat something sticky before he get in my car. Then he took his hands and just da 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 all over my windows. Was up and down on the on, then the up and down on on the automatic window window down window up window down window up. I wanted to throw him off out, out in the freeway, but oh, I couldn't I couldn't do that. That'd be called that'd be you know homicide, and we looked down and I would probably lose the sale. Um, yeah, but um, maybe not a homicide, but it would be, be on the edge. Yeah, it'd be 50-50. Yeah. Uh, Mm-hmm. But it, 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 it is totally different, and uh, it, it is unique. And I think I want to highlight on something. We are going to talk about high tech today for the majority of it, but the high mm-hmm. touch still is very effective and should not be lost in the technology era. It's still a belly-to-belly, eyeball-to-eyeball, person-to-person business, building trust, building a relationship. That's not an evil word. It's a relationship with another person and getting and getting them into the property that's going to be best for them, not just an AI bot that's going to be able to track you on every single app, and even when your phone's off to figure out if you like to eat McDonald's or Taco Bell, you know, it's still, Matt, what does that look? <laughs> just, just, Chuck, I was thinking of, uh, of Gene with his munchos, that's all. <laughs> munchos or, or Twix or whatever else, but it's, mm-hmm. I, I love the fact that you're still high touch, Chelsea. I really love that. You have to be. I mean, it's, it's, it's funny because people always look at me as like the tech person and my, my mantra is you need to now build trust through technology. And in fact, mm. in my opinion, I've been able to build more trust with more people through technology because I physically can't talk to a thousand people a day. I can on social media. I can go live. I can engage with people. People can follow my story. And after three years of following my story, when I do meet them in person, they're like, oh my gosh, I feel like I've known you forever. I'm like, you have. (laughs) It's really, you like high touch absolutely is critical. Just because Mm -hmm. it's technology involved does not mean you're taking the humanity out of it. No, it really doesn't. You can humanize yourself through that. And I think something you you glossed over super, super fast in the very beginning of this is that you talked about that you started a um, a flash briefing, right, on Alexi. So we don't send off every single Alexa. Uh, when people are listening to this. Um, but the flash briefing, how would someone start a flash briefing? How long can they be? What could they talk about? Because I think that's something that's so unique, so personal, that people could talk about anything but real estate, but people could be able to build a bond with them, brought to you by ABC Real Estate, right? So yeah, please exactly. Please that. I, I, I'll define like what a flash briefing is. Here's the thing about these you know, these tech things that are built by developers. They're, they're building them and they're using developer lingo. And so when you get into it and you start researching, you're looking at, you know, apps and skills and voice and all this. And they were using them interchangeably and it just blew my mind. So I made this like 20 minute video, got picked up by Inman. It was like literally A to Z, how do you do a flash briefing? Because I was like, if I'm confused, I know everybody else is confused. So let me just break this down. A flash briefing is a a mini podcast. And another thing that people need to wrap their minds around, you've got to remember, When Uber came out, I swear to you, I was like, I will never, ever get into a random person's car. Never going to do it. But now (laughs) we all do it. It's because we had no frame of reference. So when we think about voice, we think about marketing, we think about 50% of searches being keyboard less, you know, being voice, we're like, oh, that's weird. I can't imagine something listening to me in my house and talking to me. It's just because you don't have it yet. I'm going to love something listening to me because you know what? It's probably going to order my pizza every Sunday for me and I don't have to do it. Love it. I love an algorithm that's going to show me what I want to buy. Yes, I want to watch that next on Netflix. Thank you. <laughs> we started to think about all these like things, like crazy things that are like algorithmically going to like take over our lives. It's already here. And you know what? We like it. So we've, I mean, we've got to remember that it does make things easier. So the flash briefing is a mini podcast. I go maybe a minute. I do mine Monday through Friday and I batch them. And what I say by batch them is I start, I literally record it on my phone. There is no excuse, you guys. You do not even need to have the Lexi device. You have, everyone has Amazon app. Everyone on this planet, anyone who's watching this right now, I swear has Amazon's app. You can listen and subscribe just like a YouTube channel to anyone's flash briefings. And all you have have is your phone and that's it. Now, if I have a device, like if I have Lexi, (laughs) <laughs> I can then play, Lexi, play my flash briefings. So I get up in the morning now and I read my headlines. I read my blog headlines. It's just going to replace that. So I'm going to be having my coffee. I'm going to be putting my makeup on, doing, you know, listening to these flash briefings. Now, 
three years ago, people listening to podcasts, they, they barely listen to podcasts. I listen to podcasts all day long because I can do other things while I'm listening to it. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening is people are being able to passively take in information and content and do other stuff. And it's not just going to be a device sitting on, like I got one for my dad four years ago. He's like in his seventies. He's like, what do I do with it? I'm like, well, ask it the weather. I don't know. Like that, that was like what I thought it would do. But you guys, it's going to be built into the refrigerator. Have you gone to the refrigerator like store lately? Yes. Like, it's yes. Like, the thing. like, let me order my food. I just went to Whole Foods. I was the only person actually shopping for myself. It was the, it was like in Black Mirror. It was like the weirdest thing. People were like with their cart with a badge on shopping yes. for other people. Seriously? So, oh, that's yeah, weird. I was the only person shopping for myself in there. And that um, makes me feel so weird. everything is going to have it. I have a Tesla. It like changed my life. Like I'm not even a car person. Like I could never go back because it's all in there. Like I could, you could, it's building, they're building cars. I think BMW and the new Fords are all going to have Lexi in it. So you're just going to yeah. start talking to it and order your Uber Eats through Lexi. Come on. Y'all know you do it. I order Uber Eats all the time. I can't wait to just say it to my phone. <laughs> Uh, I have so many jokes with this. Um, you know, it's going to save Matt and Julie's relationship because the, the AI is going to listen to Julie talk when Matt totally ignores her. You know, the three obese little insulin stock control babies are going to be off on their own, you know, denting woods somewhere. And uh, Julie will be talking to the AI, AI as Matt diligently works on podcasting. Um, but, uh, I, mean, I mean, what about – how? Okay, so I'm on the uh, Amazon app right now. Where would I go find my flash brief? Oh. So I can look. So you can type in um, a couple of different places. So if you're if you're looking at your app right now, do you see where the shopping cart is? Everybody knows mm -hmm. where that shopping cart is. Right below yeah. it, tap that. That's the that. I'm sorry, almost said it. The Lexi app. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that'll take you to it right there. And there's actually in the drop down menu too. You, when I when you do shop by department, if you if you go to the little menu instead of like the actual app. Shop by department, Lexa Skills is right here. So it's kind of hidden. I mean, they haven't done a great job of marketing it, in my opinion, yet, because so many people still don't know about it. But basically, I take my phone, I, I go to my feedly.com account, and I headline read, and I give my opinion. I give my tip, trick, or takeaway, and I say, oh, Facebook just changed the algorithm. Here's what you need to know. Record it in my voice memo for one minute in my phone. I airdrop it to my computer. I use a great flash briefing site called soundupnow.com. And I just load them up. And if you got to think of it like a YouTube channel. If you're going to do YouTube, you need a host, which is YouTube. You record the video, and then you upload it to YouTube where people can watch it. So it's the same thing with the flash briefing. You record the flash briefing, which is your voice. I just use my phone. I don't use my fancy, what I've got right here right now for podcasting. You don't need any of that. And I just upload it to the, the host, and away we go. And so then people can listen to it. And I didn't think anybody was listening to it until I didn't do it for a week. And everyone's like, hey, just checking. Are you okay? We haven't heard your flash briefing today. Really? <laughs> One person's listening. Yay. Yeah. Thanks, Mom. I really appreciate <laughs> it. They're not related to me. <laughs> so yeah. so it's, so I'm going to have to go back and listen to this again to figure out how to do the flash briefing. Now, do you talk about real estate? Do you talk about life? Do you talk about yourself? Do you talk, I mean, what do you, what do you, what would you talk about? So if I were still live, you know, living, eating, breathing real estate. I mean, I really think about what can I talk about that is not exactly like, here's my listing of the day, or maybe, you know, market stats are great because people want to know that, but maybe not every single day that you're, you're talking about that. It's a really a great idea to think about what content can you talk about that is close to what your industry is, but maybe not about your industry. So I, I'm in, you know, consider myself in marketing. I give tactical tips. So I basically have a rule. It's I came up with the five E's of content. If it doesn't fall within these five E's of content, don't bother doing it because it's not going to get the engagement. It's not going to help you grow. It's got to be educational. It's got to be entertaining has to be engaging, meaning I'm asking a question. That's one of my best tips. Go on Facebook and ask a question. Um, if you guys watch Game of Thrones, which I didn't, so don't mm -hmm. kill me if you watch Game of Thrones, but, like, everybody except for me was watching it. Like, if you asked a question about Game of Thrones, are you watching Game of Thrones? Like, the people were blowing up. If you ask, what's your favorite Netflix series? You don't think you're going to get 300 comments about what you should be watching because people love to give their opinion. So you have educational, you should be doing your buyer, seller tips, market updates, things that people are asking you all the time. 
um, entertaining. That's the stuff that's like in the stories, you know, the behind the scenes, like relatable stuff. I do stuff with my kid um, all the time that people like to see uh, dogs, you know, things that are sort of like your personality. The engaging part, asking questions, um, that could be as simple as putting a polling sticker on your Instagram story to get more engagement. People like to give their input, but if you don't ask the question, they will not give it most of the time. Um, it can be exclusive. That's the fourth E. And now exclusive doesn't have to be like a pocket listing or something that hasn't hit the market. That certainly is exclusive. But you guys, not everybody gets to go home with you every day, right? Behind the scenes of what you're doing, what your passions are, what your hobbies are, what it's like to wake up with you in the morning and have a coffee, that is exclusive because that is your life. That's why stories is such a cool platform because people get to see that. Um, and the last one, let's see, I did educational, entertaining, engaging, exclusive, emotional, right? That's the, that's the last one. And I don't mean get on and go live and start crying. If you want to, that's cool. <laughs> share that story. That's, that's exclusively <laughs> my Facebook strategy. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, like, I, we just had graduation, right? I saw everybody's kid graduate from college and high school this last three weeks. And, you know, for other people, like, like that's cool. Like, they're like, yeah, my kid j is going to graduate. And I'm like an empty nester or like whatever that story is, right? I did my kid's kindergarten graduation. And that people relate to. It could be that you're training for a 5K or you've got some big thing and people are watching you talk about it over the months. And then there's a picture of you going through like the finish line and they're like, that's so awesome. It doesn't have to be this like gut-wrenching emotional thing that you're sharing. It can be human and touch on those emotions that people can share with you. So if you follow those five E's, you're good with your content. That is, I mean, if, if you guys didn't get anything else from this podcast and if you didn't shame on you you're an idiot but that is epic those e's are ridiculous because they're so simple but they're so simple that people don't think that they work because well i don't want to show my emotion about this oh no one wants to see me training from you know i'm training for a spartan race in august in hawaii you know just and i, I feel that people get annoyed seeing this stuff is there is there a level of too much posting i mean should matt dial his back a little bit Okay, so there's not a lot of too much posting, I think, in stories, because stories is tappable micro content. People are used to tapping through. It's a different way of consumption. If you're posting five times a day in the feeds, I personally would be like, okay, seen it. <laughs> too right. much. So I, you know, maybe max once a day, but stories are tappable, small, very easily to digest. And guess what? If I don't want to watch your story, I swipe or come back later and it picks up right where it left off. But I find that people really like to see a lot of stories. And I know this is going to blow people's mind, but 10 per day is sort of like my minimum that I suggest what? to people. Yeah, I know. See, you're like, wait, what? But I'll give you, I'll, I can give you 10 right now about what your day is. And like, oh, okay. you know, so here we go. Before we run into that, you have mentioned like something really important though. People always say, oh, my life is so boring. Nobody wants to see me train for a Spartan race. Like nobody's interested. Okay. So I made a point, and I, I talk about this when I um, speak, and I made a point where I was in Costco, right? Okay, relatable. Who doesn't go to Costco on a weekend, right, and stand in, like, ridiculous <laughs> lines? And, of course, I need the 12-pound bag of sea salt caramels that I'm going to eat in a week, right? So <laughs> those things are relatable. I, I went on my Instagram story, and I go, I'm going to teach you something about content right now. The most mind-numbing, boring content can still be quality. I picked up a giant thing of those Kleenex. Um, you can get like 12 of them in a pack. Mm. But okay, guys, who is team cube and who is team rectangle? And you know those cube Kleenex boxes versus rectangle? Now, I mean, if you're team rectangle, juice. I mean, who's doing <laughs> these days? Matt. But I had hundreds of people that were like, um, team cube all the way. I put one in my thing. And then people were like, well, the rectangle fits really nicely in my car. I'm like, you guys, there's magic in the mundane, the everyday stuff. It's all in how you twist it, how you ask, how you engage with people. You can make boring stuff interesting. I have a plant growing out of the front of my house. It's called alien plant. I have people asking me every day, will you send us a picture? What's she doing? She, right? They're, they've personified this thing. It's a kooky looking weird plant thing. And I'm like, it's getting larger than the house. And I'm showing it's growing taller than the roof. I've given it a name. We've made a little story about it. And people are literally like asking what's happening with alien plant. They're sending me pictures across the United States. Oh my God, I found one. I'm sending you a picture. I can't believe I found another one. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, spaceship is landing soon. I mean, it's just it's crazy. Like, it's weird stuff, you guys. There's magic in the mundane. So never think that you can't make something 
so boring, interesting. You can. It's your mindset about that content. Matt, there's hope for you. There's hope for you, Matt. <laughs> as he just remains silent as he's murdering me with a spoon in my sleep. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it is hard. I mean, if you're really, if you're trying to be alien plant, I don't know if you can be any inch more interesting than that, but you just never know. <laughs> so how can you reconstitute this? So Gina, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. So you can take these videos, right? And can you push them out into different mediums? Cause they're, they, cause they're, like you say, there's different algorithm, algorithms, algorithms, there's different ways to speak on different platforms. So would, um, would alien plant tone, you know, trend well on YouTube? Would it tone well on Facebook or is it just on the short bits on you know, Instagram stories? How does that work? Yeah, I think, you know, there is definitely a language and a flavor, if you will, to every different platform. And uh, I probably would address alien plant differently on LinkedIn than I would on Instagram. And not that I wouldn't talk about her on LinkedIn, but I would come at it from a perspective of, let me teach you about how you can make boring content interesting. And in this example, I'm going to talk about my alien plant. And I might use clips and whatever and talk about the process that I went through to engage, to get people into the story, storytelling in and of itself, the outline of it. <clears throat> that would go into LinkedIn. Whereas in my Instagram story, I'm giving you the funny, the behind the scenes, like we're looking at it together. I'm doing, you know, funny gifts around it, alien things landing, all of that. <laughs> so I'm taking the same theme and I'm, I'm twisting it to, to incorporate the language of that platform. Now, people ask me all the time, can I just take one piece of content and shoot it everywhere? I don't do that. I think you probably find 50% of people that do and 50% that don't. I like to do a little bit of an original flavor for most of the stuff that I do. And people say, oh, but that takes so much time. Like, well, okay, so I'm gonna do a five second Instagram story and then I'm gonna take a picture of you guys and we're doing the podcast. I'm gonna put the picture somewhere and I've got my little story that's going to Instagram. Didn't take me any time. It's mindset. I'm gonna go click, click, and you know, now you've got, you, if you're on Facebook stories, you can see that I did a podcast, but you're not getting the takeaways from the podcast unless you go to my Instagram story. So if you follow me on both places, it's almost 2020, people are using more than Facebook, then you're gonna get the full picture. And people like that. It's almost like little Easter eggs. They're like, ooh, Chelsea's on vacation. I better go to all of her socials because she likes to put new stuff everywhere. Hmm. That's my opinion. That is, yeah, I mean, I my, my head's moving about a thousand miles an hour. I mean, there's, I've lost out on so many opportunities. I think all of us have lost out on just countless opportunities. Like before we got going, I talked about how I nearly burnt my house down because I left the stupid coffee pot, you know, the, 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 the water boiling pot on a, on a hot stove and kind of melted my stove. I mean, that would have been perfect to say, hey, look, look what I did. I'm gonna go try to recreate it so it looks cool. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you're, gonna burn, you're gonna burn another coffee maker. Yeah, All right, exactly. let's, uh, let's, let's take a quick step back, talk about which else you work, people can go to connect, and then uh, let's finish off with a little, a little bit about hashtag strategy. So what's, what would you consider like your primary platform where you'd love for people to connect with you? I would love for people to connect with me on Instagram and you can find me by my name there. I'm sure you'll have it somewhere in the notes. I have kind of a funky last name. It's P E I T Z. So you'll find me at Chelsea Pites on all the socials, but I specifically have people go to Instagram because I do a lot of teaching there. I have a weekly um, IGTV video that has to do with real estate marketing, specifically real estate examples. I do a daily vlog. I mean, if I am not there, call someone because I have either been taken or something terrible. <laughs> um, and I'm there every day and I share tips, I share my life, and I also share information in the feed posts too. So I'm really giving Instagram my all, I'm really teaching there, I'm very focused there, and it's a great way to communicate and get to know me because you'll get to see my stories. So that's where I love to connect with people because of the stories. Cool, very cool. There's and a then, period uh, there, right? Yeah, it's Chelsea.pites. Mm -hmm. Got it. I can't follow you. It says my action's blocked to try to follow you. Oh, well, have you followed too many people recently? I don't know. Yeah. Let's so, just say tell us. <laughs> so so I'm following. Happens, yeah, we'll yeah, figure it out. Sometimes is when you're going too quickly, even if you're liking too quickly, commenting too quickly, or following too many people at once, it could be 10 people, it could be 20. It will block you temporarily. Usually it's 24 hours. Okay, it says I'm following you now. So you have a new follower. Congrats. Perfect. Yay. Me too. So, 
<laughs> uh, and then Gene, what's the best way for people to reach out and connect with you? Well, since we're on Instagram, talk about it. Instagram.com forward slash the Gene Volpe. Perfect. About that. Greg, what about you? Uh, uh, where to get a hold of me? Well, fine. We'll do Instagram. Greg McDaniel, R E U, Instagram. You can follow all my hopefully soon to be irrelevant, relevant content that Chelsea is going is has been uh, pushing me into. My spirit animal has guided me once again. But uh, if, if you guys want to go to bookmcdaniel.com, book, let's, let's go talk about EXP, you know, kind of what we're building. We're, we have exci extremely exciting news. I, uh, Australia was just opened up. We are opening up in Australia. We are going to go big. We're going to go hard in the paint. Uh, we're also going to go into England. So big things are happening hard for us. So you know where hard that comes from, Jim Volpe, going hard in the paint. All right. Uh, there it is. Oh, Book fun basketball metaphors. All right. Yes. Uh, okay. So let's uh, let's finish out with this, Chelsea. Give us uh, give us some tactics, especially anything that's working right now versus what we may have heard, you know, a couple of years ago with hashtag strategy. What's working at the moment? Sure. So hashtags. I think I see three main mistakes that are happening the majority of the time. And by by correcting these very easily, you will see more growth. You'll see more engagement. All of that. So the first one is not using enough hashtags in every one of your posts. Hashtags are critical on Instagram. They are how things are categorized, how you find things. Um, for those people who don't know what a hashtag is, and I'm considering myself in this category, anybody who's over 40, who maybe isn't quite sure what it is, it's like back in the old days when you went to the actual library and there was a card catalog and you flipped through and found the card and then you would walk to that aisle and find the number of the book. That little like card, is a hashtag. It's helping you find other things you're interested in. So they're very, very important. And people are using two, three, maybe four. Your max per feed post is 30. And I know people are like, 30? Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Oh. I'm going to come with 30 all the time. Well, you have to do your research first and you have to spend some time, which is one of the things I'm going to talk about next, going through Instagram, looking at the hashtags, looking at the usage of it, the size, all of that are people who are looking for those hashtags relevant to your audience, putting it in a spreadsheet. It's a one and done. I spent two hours watching Netflix and researching. And once it was done, it was done and it changed my growth immensely. It's oh. worth it. So not using enough. You should use 20 to 25 minimum. Seriously? And, yep, yep, you should. Because here's the thing. If I said to you guys, okay, lottery tonight, and I'm giving away tickets, do you guys want one or 30? 30. Right. More chances to win. Okay? So oh. that's why you need to be using more. So number one is not using enough hashtags. Number two is using the wrong kinds of hashtags, meaning too big. So hashtag real estate, y'all, stop using it. You will never, never rank for it. It has 33 million posts that are using it. Here's what happens. I use hashtag real estate. It goes bloop, and then, ooh, all these other people are, you know, burying me because they're using it too. So you don't want to use the really big ones, like hashtag love, hashtag real estate, um, all of that. Even hashtag realtor is like nine point something million. This is weird that I know all the numbers because I've done my research. Um, so you want to use things that are um, lower so that you have a chance to rank for it. So you may maximum top, never over a, a million, low million, okay? Then you want to have some that are in the six figures. Then you want to have some in the five figures. Then you want to have some that are micro niche, like maybe four figures. And I rank for those four and five figures all the time. And I go and I look and I see my posts there. And people are searching. That is how people will find your post, find your account. Guess what? If you have a link in your bio and a Facebook pixel on it, now you can generate leads. Now I can create a custom audience. So you have to be using the right hashtags to be found. But the sizing is important. Can I just hire you to do my Instagram posts, please? <laughs> I, I got I got snow blindness on this whole idea of 25 hashtags. I'm like, oh, so laborious. I'm well, you use an app. I mean, you can use an app like um, Crowd. Crowdfire is a good one. Um, shoot, Tailwind is another good one. One of my clients uh, does a lot of work with them. So what Tailwind does is you can you can formulate your Instagram posts, and then they will actually recommend the hashtags based on the content of the post. Really? And then you can actually go in there, and it will tell you by I think it's actually color coded on which are the you know bigger, larger, you know kind of medium sized, whatever. So it gives you a range of ones and then you just kind of click and dump and then you can separate out like content buckets and have a set of hashtags 
kind of reserved that you just copy everything and dump it right into that post. So that there's a bunch of different uh, inexpensive tools. Um, Crowdfire and Tailwind are both good at that to make that easier to come up with your 25 or 30 hashtags. So it's it's not it's not a, an insurmountable task. And I just honestly, I'm you know kind of old school. I just save it in a note on my phone. I've got five different lists, and I just oh. copy and paste it. So once I've done the research and typed it out one time, I'm not typing them out every single time I'm posting. I'm just copying mm -hmm. and pasting. So that's number one and two, not easy enough, and then using ones that are too big. The last one, and probably the most important one, the one, the biggest mistake I see all the time in our industry is using non-relevant hashtags. People, and I'm one of those people, I, I get it. You're like, oh, hashtag realtor, hashtag realtors of Instagram, hashtag mortgage. Y'all, no consumer is looking for hashtag realtor in Instagram, not one. <laughs> and here's what we need to do. And this makes sense because that is our industry. And we think, oh, these are great hashtags because they are describing your industry. Not to say you should never use them. But if you want to attract a lead, a, a transaction, a relationship, a client, what are they searching for? Well, guess what? I'm looking for a house, have been for a while. Um, when I go to Instagram, I look at stuff like Farmhouse Kitchen, House Goals, Joanna Gaines, uh, Scottsdale Homes. So just start with location, number one. Location plus home. Location plus whatever. Lo uh, Scottsdale Homes, San Diego Homes, San Diego Life, San Diego Local. Those are things that are going to attract somebody who might be looking to move to that area or maybe already in that area. And, you know, certainly if you're looking at design inspiration types of hashtags, now you have to research them because, you know, again, you don't want to get something that's like 5 million uses. So you have to kind of look through that. But you have to think about what is your end consumer searching. They are not coming to Instagram and saying, hmm, let's search for hashtag realtor today. It's like going into Facebook and saying, I'm going to click on an ad. We don't do that. It just <laughs> falls into our feet. And it's a very common thing. And it's something that I did for a long time too, because you're you're thinking, what are things that describe what I do? What are things that I would want to be posting there? And we we all hear we gotta use hashtags and we think relevant. We think, well, that's that's relevant because it's in my industry. But sitting down and thinking about what can you do that's more local? What can you do that is actually what people are looking for in Instagram? And just go to those design posts. Look, look at their hashtags. Look at all the stuff that they're doing. You're, you're going to be writing, you know, so fast. There's going to be, like, tons of them in there. And then you just got to research them and see what the sizes are. God, you're blowing my mind. I mean, I've been doing it so wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Head explosion. It's just I've been, I've, been doing, I've, been, I've been doing it wrong. I have been doing it wrong. Okay. All, of us, all of us have. We've all done it wrong. It's that we, you know, how would you know? How would you know? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, we all think, <laughs> I, here's, I don't here's know that I was doing it wrong. <laughs> Here, here's the part that sucks. The minute huh. you start doing it right, they change it up on you again. I know. Uh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Job security. Here, let me show you something. Can I show you something real quick? So yeah. if you're watching on video, this is kind of cool. So I got the new Pixel 3. You were talking about voice. Um, uh, voice activation, voice recognition, voice search. So I don't, I don't know if you can see this, but watch what happens. If I squeeze the phone, who is Greg McDaniel? An epic human being. What do you so, What do you mean? Who is? I mean, that's what it says on the screen. Is oh, who is Greg McDaniel? No, no, no. So no. So what I did was when I squeeze the phone, the outside yeah. of the phone, it yeah. starts my Google Assistant. Like you know how you go, okay, Google. Yeah. Ah. yeah. So I squeeze it, it brings up my thing, and I go, who is who is Greg McDaniel? And now I have every single thing on Google and I in my that. contacts. What? It has to do with Greg, mm. his YouTube channel. Look at this. Oh, wow. That's Isn't sexy. That crazy? And I just squeeze it. <laughs> that is sexy. I agree with you. That is sexy. <laughs> All right. Calm down over there, Greg. <laughs> um, okay. So, so we talked about how to, uh, how to reach out to us. Uh, Greg, just real quick, let's finish out with uh, with a couple of things. What, what's the best way to get a call booked on your calendar? So rather than connecting on Instagram, how do they get right on the calendar? BookMcDaniel.com. Uh, so BookMcDaniel.com will take you to a booking site. Book 30 minutes with me. Let's talk about EXP, guys. We are expanding. We're exploding. We are growing. We're thriving. We're not just surviving. So if you guys want to start making more money in real estate and not having to sell soap but build passive income, I will show you on a spreadsheet how you can make more money with EXP in our tribe. And I have some stuff that Matt doesn't even know about that we're partnering with some people. They're going to just be ridiculous value add. And it like if you like Chelsea, you're going to love the guys that I am partnering with and the social media stuff that they are bringing to the table that you will start crushing skulls in a good way. Of course, we, we don't want bodily harm. Um, 
when it comes to social media and attraction and uh, for both recruiting for real estate agents and for recruiting for clients for buying and selling real estate. So go to bookmcdaniel.com, get on my calendar, be there at B-Square. There it sounds. That's right. Yeah. All right. Uh, first of all, there is nothing that you know that I do not know, Greg. That's that's a that is a literal and scientific impossibility. But I appreciate that you would try occasionally. Occasionally, um, I do my best, man. I get an E for effort. <laughs> Chelsea, there's, there's another E for you, an effort. Yeah, yeah. Well, we have, but now we have six E's. Now I'm going to change all my marketing stuff. That's right. All right. And then for me, uh, if you want to if you want to do what Chelsea's doing and get featured on podcasts and reach more people, regardless uh, of what you are doing, uh, or if you're I, w- I was just talking to one of our previous guests, Scott Morris, earlier today before we jumped on. And he was picking my brain a little bit on um, what to talk about when he gets featured so that it promotes both his podcast that he hosts and his local real estate practice, which is based in L.A. So if you're in kind of that same boat, you're doing a lot of marketing, you want to get featured on more podcasts, but you don't have the time to do all the pitching yourself, uh, go to pursuingresults.com slash training. Uh, we'll show you how to find the right podcast, how to you know put together a system where you reach out, but more importantly, how to get somebody else and how to hire somebody that can do that for you and then put them through this training that I've created so that they pitch you and that you uh, you limit yourself to doing the things that are the most important, which is what we're doing today, showing up and having an awesome conversation with uh, fellow influencers. So uh, go to the pursuingresults.com slash training. Uh, as always, go to Gene Volpe, uh, check him out on every platform. Uh, he is the master at breaking up and syndicating content across multiple mm. platforms and getting you more exposure. Check out Chelsea, uh, grab her on Instagram. I'm pretty much, it sounds like you can pretty much get you on every platform by your name. Is that right? That's correct. Awesome. And then I before E, except after C, and apparently your last name. Yeah. Well, <laughs> okay. Some people, it's like Old McDonald, E-I-E-I-O. Now you yeah. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very cool. Chelsea, it's been a pleasure. We appreciate you being here. Gene, as always, thank you. And then, Greg, uh, let's shall we put a, uh, a nice warrior blue on this one? I like warrior blue, but I'm going to make a personal request first. I okay. want my spirit animal back on the show ASAP. This is we, we, we need more of Chelsea on the show because we I'm. Got LinkedIn. We can talk about nobody. Talk, nobody's getting on LinkedIn. You guys got to dust off that LinkedIn. Ooh. I literally did a Facebook Live about that an hour ago, and you're 100% right. Nobody uses it. I have a mind reader, too. Am I scaring you now? (laughs) Yes. You've been using the Alexa app too much. You've been spying on us. You've been listening to us. Um, So we we will get you booked back again. You are awesome. This is so much fun. I have learned personally a ton. I'm super excited to do flash briefings, Uh, look at this tailwind thing, the hashtags. I mean, yeah, we're going to get you booked. I don't care what Matt says. Um, but here's a warrior blue bow on this show. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Matt. There's five of them. Um, so guys, keep watch- listening, keep watching, keep sharing, get this out to people that might need this. Um, cause this is seriously good content. If you want to be above uh, your competition, listen to this episode again and share it. Cause uh, Chelsea obviously knows what she was talking about. So Chelsea, thank you. Hashtag spirit animal, uh, for being on the show. And, um, for all the rest of you guys, peace out ninjas. Ooh, I love you. We're gone. <laughs>